you guys what's happening. So, kind of developing some play in my steering wheel, and I've actually had it um, ever since I upgraded my steering shaft. Can't remember if I bought it at Wild Horses or Tom's Bronco or something like that. Let me share it real fast. So, it's the steering shaft right here. I hope you can see that right here. I'm probably end up opening my hood up so you can see better light. But it's the one with the actual U joints in it. Right there, one right there, here, and it has like a sliding shaft right there. And I hope you can see that. But the play is actually in there. Can you see that right there? There's a lot of play in there, and I've actually like tightened up my steering gear. This is a uh, one of those four by four. Uh, well, they consider it, it's kind of like a, it's called a rock crawler box, but it's actually like a combination of a two wheel drive and a four wheel drive. Yeah, it's called the rock crawler. It's like the one. It's way heavier duty than like the Borg Warner one and the stock one. Um, but this joint seems like it's nice and tight. So sometimes you can get play in these little U joints here, and I think this one. Like ever since I got the, I originally had got the shaft when I gave myself a one-inch body lift. I'm um, trying to show you some of the symptoms. So that's a lot of play in the wheel. Um, you know, so I said I've looked at the steering gear, tightened that up, and what's funny is I noticed this. I mean, obviously when I put the shaft on, um, but I put that probably five or six years ago. So I've been dealing with it. Finally, I want to actually fix it the real way. Or I want to take it apart and weld some nuts on it and some, put some set screws on it. i got to see what it says. It's 1966 Bronco. 351 Windsor in it. Holly fuel injection. Airbox heads. F4TE roller block. But yeah, it's always a headache to get that, that shaft off. Yeah, it's uh, in a weird spot and it's... It's going to take me a while. This is always a headache to get take off. Alright, so I got it off. Um... So maybe I can show you under the light here on my workbench here. I'm trying to get the, the play is. I need to get a little clamp it down somehow. But I want to show you how much play there is in here. It's between the shafts here where they couple together. See that? I'm barely touching it, but that actually that translates to a big movement in the steering wheel. So the thing is actually held on typically with the, with the Zerk fitting, the grease fitting. And it was never tight, you know, when I first got it, you know. Um, plus this... I think I gotta adjust these caps too. The end caps are like one is looser than the other. So, um, all right, so I'm going to go through what I'm, my idea was. See right there, the Zerk fitting holds on to that thing right there. Um, you know, the, you said you, you kind of typically want it to articulate, so you can kind of... Uh, I might just fix mine, I'm not sure. I, I haven't decided yet. Um, so when your body is flexing, right, in your frame, it's flexing at a different rate. So you need to sort of have some play in there so you don't jack up your... For that car to go by. So you're not going to uh, jack up your steering gear because you don't want to be ramming this thing into the steering gear. It's going to screw up your steering gear. The steering wheel is actually probably fine. Well, there's shock absorbers in the steering wheel. Um, in, in the steering shaft, the upper steering shaft. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I might just fix it. We'll see how it goes. Sorry, I'm going to weld on two nuts. Here and here, and then I put some, uh, some probably some M8 set screws in here, like that, so I can lock this thing in place and keep it tight. You know, even if I didn't lock it fully in place, at least by putting some tension on it, it wouldn't allow it to. It, you could still allow it to flex. We'll go through it once I get it on there. So I'm gonna take this paint off and I weld it on there. A couple nuts. Yeah, I'm actually gonna. I mean, see how this is just threaded in there? To me, that's not enough meat to really grab onto it. So if I just shredded this little small part right here, that thin couple millimeter shaft, I don't feel like that would be strong enough to hold that thing in there. So as a precaution, I'm going to be welding some of these on there. All right, so I made a really small hole here, just just enough to get that thing through there. 
And then uh, I put this thing on here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to clamp it down because I don't want it to move when I'm welding it. And then uh, that way I'm actually keeping the hole aligned. Just got to make sure I don't hit it but with the welder. But yeah, I'm going to get my vice grips and clamp my place and uh, got like an old mega. I'm not going to show you welding it, but it's uh, got like an old, I mean, I have a stick welder offer up score and uh, I've actually had this for like 15 years. It's uh, like 110 meg welder. It's not very good. It's, it's Lincoln, but it's not powerful enough to really penetrate metal very deeply. So I got some welds on there. <laughs> That's after I've cleaned it up too. That's how bad I went welding. I just don't weld enough to be good at it. So <clears throat> yeah, not great. So I'm going to paint it now. All right. So I also noticed that this little shaft back and forth, not this way, but this way. There's a little plane over here. So I'm going to try pounding the caps down a little bit just to maybe get it tighter. I know these are supposed to keep it in place, but maybe these just aren't in tight enough because it doesn't feel, just feel like the end caps. Like it's not, it's just loose this way. So I think if I put the end caps in a little bit more, it will, um, pick up that slack. All right, so I'm gonna use my vise here and um, maybe tighten it down. I don't want to over tighten it. I mean, normally you think you could just do by the, doing the screw, but you can't, it's not strong enough. I think the screw is just to kind of keep it in place but not actually push it in. All right, slack is gone. I don't think there's a way to oil this. I think it's sealed. Unless I take those caps off. But yeah, the play is gone in here. You know, steering components are pretty critical, so you should use thread locker on everything. Especially something that don't have a lock nut on. Yeah, I got some paint on this thing. Alright, so I'm just gonna get this in here now. I'm not fishing with it later. And then um <clears throat> Yeah, you can't fix it if you I mean you I mean I could have welded it if I wanted, but this needs to be able to flex it or not because if you can't compress it then you can't get it out of the out of the machine, out of out of the Bronco. So, I'm going to put this back in. Alright guys, so, so that, that play is actually not play. Well, the play that I was describing before is gone. So actually I feel resistance here, but now it's actually since I fixed that problem, it amplified another problem. So when I turn the wheel, I can see the whole body moving back and forth. See that right there? Alright. Maybe I can... This on camera. I'm gonna look right there. I'm gonna corner a bunch of performance shops. That's why I always use cart. Let's see right there. Right there. All right. I gotta fix that bushing. So that's actually amplifying the uh, the play problem. So I'm gonna fix that. I think I might even have another box of that. But all right. So show you the steering shaft. There it is. All right. So got all that play fixed there. Got to fix that pushing issue and we're good. All right, well that's how I did it. Uh, yeah, from the get-go, as soon as I bought it, it was always an issue I got. As soon as I put the thing on there, I immediately had play. So, um, all right guys, cool.